have already discussed that under financial management, what we are going to see is investment decision, dividend decision and financing decision. Now, investment decision is with regard to expenditure, with regard to investments. So there are two categories of investment, capital expenditure, capital investment and working capital investment. Capital investment is an investment which is of capital in nature. So, of course, an investment we already know, we have done in this in accounts that what is a capital expenditure? Capital expenditure expenditure which is done to purchase the non-current assets of the organization which could give the benefit us, uh, to us for more than one year per se. Or otherwise, work, what is working capital expenditure? Working capital expenditure is an expenditure which is uh, incurred for a particular year and after uh, the year, another, uh, another year, a new expenditure needs to be done. So our syllabus, as discussed, we have already uh, divided this uh, into unit one and unit two. So in this particular, from this particular class, we'll be starting off with the unit one of the syllabus that deals with the capital investment. Now your chapter two deals with the investment appraisal technique. Investment, which, does, which sort of investment are we talking about here? Capital investment. Capital investment appraisal technique. Now what are investment appraisal techniques? So of course, in uh, when we conduct a business, we may have a choice of in, incurring different sort of a capital expenditure. We may have different choices to conduct a capital expenditure in a business organization. Right. So capital expenditure may be done. There are there could be different options to undertake a capital expenditure in a business organization. So as a business organization, we need to make a choice. We need to select which capital expenditure can be undertaken by the business organization. So under capital investment, what we are going to do is we are going to select what capital expenditure can be undertaken by the organization. So under capital investment, appraisal, we'll be appraising each of these option and selecting which of the options are viable. Appraising means to evaluate. Now we have capital investment appraisal techniques. Now, to evaluate, we must be following different methods to evaluate which project is viable. So there are different techniques given to you to choose which investment appraisal is viable. So under this, uh, uh, like in the first two chapters of this uh, unit, we'll be discussing what are the different capital investment appraisal techniques. We'll be discussing each and every capital investment appraisal technique and then we'll also be discussing the merits and demerits of each in capital investment appraisal technique. Coming on to this particular chapter, under this chapter, we'll be talking about some basic capital investment appraisal technique. Bas why they have been named as basic? Why? Because uh, like they are, the, these sort of a capital investment technique does not m require much evaluation. They do not require much, uh, any sort of an evaluation or much uh, data resources uh, to do such evaluation. These are very simple uh, investment appraisal technique. So we have two techniques, two basic capital investment appraisal technique in hand. First one is ROCE, ROCE, return on capital employed. And second capital investment appraisal technique is payback period. So of course, we'll be discussing them and discussing their merits and demerits. So capital investment appraisal projects, process, under this what we do is, we'll, uh, we'll evaluate each investment option will uh, determine like what are the benefits, what is the profitability, what is the cash flows involved with each investment option and thereafter we'll take a decision by using some investment appraisal technique that okay which project can be undertaken here. So first capital investment uh, appraisal technique is your ROCE. ROC. What is the full form of ROCE? Return on capital employed. So this is the first technique 
that is return on capital employed so return on capital employed is basically gives you a, a percentage of how much should be the average profit over the capital investment undertaken so it is calculated using a formula average annual profits divided by initial investment so under this as we, we, we what we are going to do see we are going to see that if we employ One dollar of investment in this project, in this particular project, what what will be the profitability generated by each of the project? So let's say we have four projects in option. A project require investment of one million. This project requires uh, investment of one point two million. This project require investment of ten uh, million. This project in, uh, requires investment of five million. And they have given you a profitability on gauge it. Can we see? Uh, can we say that okay, out of these projects, whichever projects give you the maximum profitability, that should be selected? No, because we know that the investment re levels required for each of the projects are different. so roc method could be used to make this decision at uh, to uh, to uh, make the profitability at par we'll bring the profits at par what we'll do is we'll find out the percentage by taking net profit upon capital employed and thereafter computing a percentage of the profitability now let's say we've been given an option of three projects a b c d A project ROC is given to you forty percent. B project ROC is twelve percent to twenty percent. C project ROC is fifteen percent. D project ROC is thirty percent. Which project shall be selected? A project which has an ROC highest ROC that should be selected. Or otherwise, if I have only one project that say has an ROC E of fifteen percent. now how do i select that whether this project shall be undertaken or not so what we'll do is we'll compare project a return with the cost of the project or you can say the cost of capital let's say the cost of project is 16% and roc 15% now whether the project shall be selected no because the cost is more than the return so the project shall be selected if roc e is more than cost of capital so roc can be calculated by using two methods one is by taking average profits divided by initial investment next method is by taking average profits divided by initial ca average capital investment of course we'll be talking about the ca uh, the invest uh, like uh, the calculation part later but these are the two methods out of these two methods the out of these two formulas to calculate uh, uh, under th the difference here is like in the first scenario we are taking the initial investment in the second scenario we are taking the average investments that is the difference here now out of these two options what option shall be selected what option shall be given priority of course this formula will be given priority so if the question states nothing you have to use the first formula that is average profits upon initial cost now let's see a question where will be calculating the roc using both the methods and let's see how all this will going to work let's see the question first a project involves immediate purchase of an item from plant costing 110000 So the initial cost of the plant is one lakh ten thousand. It would generate the cash flows of twenty four four hundred for five years. Now for five years you are expecting a cash flow of twenty four four hundred. The plant purchase would have a scrap value of ten thousand in five years. After which the project will terminate. Determine the project ROC using initial investment or using capital investment. Now, using an initial investment, how do we calculate ROC E? of course uh, there are cash flows given that is 24400 24400 24400 and 24400 now roc uses p b i t not cash flows 
So if you are given the cash flows, cash flow in, involves inflows and outflows. So if you are given the cash flows, you need to subtract the depreciation part from it to calculate your profits. So this is how we calculate the profits and this method specifically uses profits, not the cash flows. So we've been given the cash flows in the question. First of all, what we need to do is to calculate the profits. To calculate the profits, we need to calculate the depreciation part. Now, for the depreciation, what they have stated is that initial investment is 110,000 and the scrap value is 10,000 and the life of the project is five years. So we need to calculate depreciation using straight line method. So using straight line method, the depreciation would be 110,000 minus 10,000 divided by five. So every year you will get a depreciation amount of 20,000. So if I subtract 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000 every year, I'll get 4400, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, every year. Now average of 4400 for five years will also be average uh, uh, 4400. So average profits, if we add all of it, divide it with the 505, we'll get 4400 itself, right? Now, we need to firstly, they have asked you to calculate the ROC using initial capital cost. So in the first part, the answer, the ROC would be average profits divided by initial cost. Initial cost is 110,000. This percentage, whatever the percentage come, that will be your ROC. In 200, we have to do. In the second part, they have asked you to calculate the ROC using average investment. Of course, to do the average, we need uh, to, uh, to calculate this for a formula, the formula of ROC, we have to use the average investment. And how do we use, uh, how do we do average of the investment? We'll have to do 1,10,000 plus 10,000 divided by 2. So we'll have to do average investment amounts to 60,000. So 4,400 divided by 60,000 in 200. That will be ROC using average investment. I hope that is clear. So this is how we calculate the ROC using initial investment and ROC using average investment.